we're going to continue to talk about the ancient Middle East. Um, where we left off last time, we were talking about the Assyrians. Uh, we talked about how eventually people would start to rebel because of the Assyrians' cruel treatment. Um, they were very powerful, but to a certain extent, being too cruel to the people around you is not always the best idea. It can keep people in line, but eventually people can get so upset that they will fight back. And the Chaldeans were an example of a group of people that rebelled and they took control of Nineveh in 612 BC. All right, so Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of the Chaldeans, and he was essentially a descendant of the Babylonians. So the Babylonians who had had control before, Nebuchadnezzar was considered himself to be a descendant of the Babylonians, as were the Chaldeans themselves, and they rebuilt Babylon. And Babylon, rather than Nineveh, ends up becoming the center of the Chaldeans empire. Uh, it was surrounded by a very huge wall. It had palaces, it had temples. And remember, we talked about this yesterday, particularly in Zoom. And when I mentioned that you guys need to remember this, uh, a ziggurat. And a ziggurat was a large religious temple for the ancient Mesopotamians. So Nebuchadnezzar, there is some debate as to whether or not the Hanging Gardens actually existed. They were one of the seven wonders of the world. But according to legend, Nebuchadnezzar ordered the Hanging Gardens to be built. Uh, supposedly, it was for his wife who missed her green mountainous homeland. It was supposedly a very beautiful green area with a lot of plants and a lot of vegetation. At least that's what the legends say. Uh, if the hand gardens are actually real, it was Nebuchadnezzar who ordered them to be built. So the Chaldeans, let's talk about them a little bit more. So they were merchants, artisans, and traders. They were people that sold. They had people that made goods. They had people that traded goods around the world. And Babylon was on a trade route, meaning that people would come through from other lands to trade along this route. So Babylon was in a very good position to be able to buy and sell goods. And also, Chaldeans had something called astronomers. Uh, we still have those today, uh, people who study the heavenly bodies, map the stars, planets, and phases of the moon. So these astronomers were very good at learning how the planets worked. They may have interpreted it differently back then than we do now in the scientific way, but that's when we first start seeing astronomers. The Chaldeans, however, lose control of their empire to the Persians, the same Persian empire that fought against uh, the Greeks that we spoke about in class as well. So what made Babylon the world's richest city? What made it the world's richest city is being on a major trade route, which meant merchants and artisans benefited from trade. They were very rich because people were constantly going in and out of Babylon, buying and selling goods. And the city also had beautiful structures that people would want to come in and see, like the Hanging Gardens and the Ishtar Gate. 